Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm Nerd on the Street, and today I'm showing you how to install Paranoid Android on your Nexus 7. This is not Paranoid Android. Uh, I haven't installed it yet. Alright, so we're going to just jump right in here. Here I have a stock Nexus 7, which I still need to update. Uh, I should probably do that before we continue the video. Alright, so I'm done with that. So yeah, the first thing you're going to want to do before we start this process is update your tablet to the newest version of Android available. Uh, so right now that would be 4.4.2, I believe. Um, so now what we're going to do, I hope this is in the shot, is we are going to go to our settings. And make sure you back up everything before you do this. Use Titanium Backup or something. Just back up all your data. Your apps that you've bought, you will get the apps back, but the data within the apps you will not get back, or you might or might not get back. It's it's hard to tell. Um, sometimes situations change. So just make sure you back anything important up before you do this. Uh, so we're going to go to, at the bottom settings, About Tablet. And in that section, we will go to the uh, Build Number and just tap the Build Number a bunch of times. And eventually it will say, You are now a developer. And then once it says you are now a developer, we can go back to settings. And now there's a new section in settings called developer options. Go there. And then what you want to do is find USB debugging and just enable USB debugging. Click OK. All right. So USB debugging is now enabled. So I will move the camera over here so that you can see the computer screen. But I will also hold the tablet up whenever you need to see that. So, as you can see, we've got a couple things happening here. The first thing you're going to need to do is go and get the Nexus Root Toolkit, which is available at wugfresh.com slash nrt. I will link to that in the description because I know you can't see that right now. Uh, there are other toolkits that you can use for this, or you could do it manually, but the Nexus Root Toolkit I just find to be easy to use. So, what you're going to do at this point is just plug your tablet into your computer. There's the plug. Uh, so yeah, just plug it in as you normally would. And there we go. So when you start up Nexus uh, Root Toolkit, it will possibly download some files. Just click OK and download anything you need to download. Because yeah, that's kind of important. Here we go. Um, when you first start this up, you'll see this dialog box. Uh, select the device you have, Nexus 7 Wi-Fi. And if you have the 2013 version, select version 2. I have the version 1, so um, I am on the 4.4.2. Um, apply. That's mine, right? Yeah, apply. All right, so it'll tell you how to enable USB debugging. We've already done that. So then it will re-go with its downloading files. And what it's doing is it's checking if it has the files it needs to root your device. So what we're going to do at uh, this point is you see this button right here that says root and we are just going to click that and you'll see in a minute that our tablet will detect that the computer's trying to do stuff um so yeah we'll go ahead and click the root oh all right uh what you're you're also going to want to check also flash custom recovery if you're going to want to install paranoid android or cyanogen mod or another recovery like I'm wanting to, or another, not recovery, but another ROM like I'm wanting to. So by default, it installs TWRP, Twerp, or Team Win Recovery Project, uh, and installs that custom recovery. So yeah, check, also flash custom recovery, and even if you don't want to install another ROM right now, that's just a good thing to have. Why is this downloading all my apps? Well, uh, yeah, it, it's the custom recovery is just in case you ever want to install something um, that you need to not be booted into Android for. So we're going to click root, and it will say a box. Okay, all right, right. Uh, so you're going to have to click unlock before you, before you do this. I've already unlocked my tablet. Um, USB debugging needs to be enabled. Okay, so the good thing about the Nexus root toolkit is it walks you through everything. So like I said, you're, you'll need to unlock the tablet before you can root or do anything. Um, and I've already done that, but if you haven't, just click unlock. It will wipe your device, make a backup first, it says it right there. Uh, I don't think my drivers are set up, so I'm going to set up my drivers now, and all you need to do is click the full driver installation guide, 
right there and it will walk you through that as well. So that's why this toolkit is a really good thing to have. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna install my drivers now and I'll be right back. All right, so I just found out that the problem may be that the Nexus 7 wants you to plug it in as a camera when you first, uh, yeah, see, connected as a media device. Uh, touch for other USB options, yeah. Uncheck media device. That was the problem, I believe. Ah, there we go. So not only did you have to uncheck media device, you have to check camera as well. So we've got a box on the Nexus, allow USB debugging. Uh, okay, we will allow. I probably should have checked always allow from this computer, but whatever. So now if we click root, um, we will probably, all right, checking ADB status. ADB device was not found. All right, always allow from this computer. Okay. All right, try again, slash refresh. Device connected, there we go, that's what we wanted to see. So now the Nexus is going to reboot into the bootloader. So it's just going to go through checking fast boot status. Fast boot's pretty hard to screw up. Device connected. Um, booting modified boot.img. So it's just going through a list of stuff. And um, at this point you don't really need to touch the computer, just like waiting for your device, stuff like that. I'm gonna set the Nexus down. Uh, just so I don't accidentally unplug it or anything, but I will point the camera at it. As you can see, it is now booting into Android, which is what the computer's waiting on right now. So yeah, as you can see, it is now booting into Android 4.4.2. And there we go. We are booted. So the computer is still waiting on the device right now. Maybe if we unlock it. USB debugging connected. All right, well. Still says waiting for your device. There we go, device detected by the computer. We'll just swipe that up. Pushing root files to your device. And this is cool. So at this point, our device is going to be rooted. You don't actually need a custom recovery or a separate ROM to root your device. You can be rooted and on stock at the same time, and that'll just let you install programs and things that need root access. So if you don't want to do CyanogenMod or Paranoid Android or anything, that's okay, you can still root. Uh, checking fast boot status. It looks like we're installing. Yep, flashing custom recovery. You can choose to use Clockwork Mod if you want. I just stuck with um, Twerp because I just prefer it. Uh, I just prefer how it works. I prefer using it over the controls of Clockwork Mod. So booting Twerp. So it's trying to boot Twerp. It's not. There we go. So this is Twerp. And as you can see, yeah, I just like how, how this one looks compared to Clockwork Mod. I like this one better. So, rebooting, probably rebooting into Android at this point. And as of now, I do not think that we have actually wiped the device. I think we still have all of our files and everything. Not quite sure, but as you can see, yeah, we're booting into Android. I'm pretty sure that at this point, we're still, you would not have had to back your files up as long as everything goes correctly at this point. And you can hear my computer in the background. Oh, Android is upgrading. All right, so yeah, I don't think we've lost much. Uh, you can hear my computer in the background doing disconnected and connected sounds, and that might happen on your computer, depending on what operating system you're on, and or regardless of what operating system you're on. As you can see, yeah, at this point, I think we're still... Um, looks like we've broken some... Oh, there we go. All right, just took a minute to load. So, automated routing procedure completed, according to the computer. Right there. Guys, I know you don't like the camera pointed at the screen situation, but you know, what are you going to do? So yeah, as you can see, finish the process, make sure you are successfully rooted, open Super SU, Super SU. Uh, now there's two apps that you can use for root, either Super SU or Super User. We got Super SU, that's totally fine. Uh, binary needs to be updated. All right, so I'm hoping this works because we just rooted this. I would hate for it to be messed up. Oh, installation success. Uh, recommended that you reboot your device now. So we are now going to uh, power off and then we will power right back on as soon as that turns back on. So while that's turning off and on, we're going to go through the next step, next step to doing Paranoid Android, which is what I am trying to install. So okay to exit that script. Now, to get Paranoid Android, you're going to go to paranoidandroid.co, and if you go there, you're going to see a couple of buttons. You will see ROMs and G apps. You're going to need 
both ROMs and G apps. G apps is Google apps because Paranoid Android does not come with like the Play Store and Gmail and YouTube and stuff like that automatically. You have to install G apps for that stuff. So you'll want to go to ROMs, uh, click on whatever, do, uh, their website's a little slow. Click on whatever um, model you have. I have Nexus 7 2012 Wi Fi. So I will click on that. And now click the newest version, which is 4.0 Beta 5. Um, next, after you download that, I've already downloaded that one, going to go to G Apps. Um, choose one of these three things. Go to Android File Host. And here we go. Yeah, just go to Android File Host. And then there will be uh, Parent on Android G Apps. Now, if you downloaded 4.3, you would use the 4.3 G Apps. Since we downloaded 4.4.2, I think we get 4.4.2, right? KitKat is 4.4. So yeah, we're going to want the 4.4.2. Okay, file download. Please wait. So now we are going to download from Mirror 1. And as you can see, we're downloading G Apps. I'm going to move that to my desktop in just a moment, just so that it's nice and clear what's going on for you guys. Uh, just so you know, the tablet has turned off. I'm now turning it back on. I'll let you know when everything gets done downloading and we're ready to move on from this point. The next thing I had planned to do was use the Nexus Toolkit to uh, flash Paranoid Android and Google Apps onto the tablet. However, theoretically we should be able to flash those onto the tablet without using the Nexus Root Toolkit at all. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do is first we're going to try and do this without using the Nexus Root Toolkit. Uh, if that doesn't work, then I'll just cut this part of the video out and you will not see anything except for it working when we do use the Nexus Real Toolkit. What we're going to do now is copy Paranoid Android and also Google Apps. Uh, Jesus. All right, copy. We are going to paste those into the Nexus. Oh, all right, it worked in the pictures folder. All right, so maybe you just have to go into a folder for this to work. So, as you can see, copying and. The Google Apps at this point is actually bigger than Paranoid Android itself, and that kind of tells you something about how much bloatware Google ships with their devices at this point. I know it's not technically bloatware, because Google also makes Android, but I mean, AOSP uh, is way more different from Google's version of Android than it should be. Anyway, here we go. Both of those are on the tablet. Now we are going to unplug the Nexus, and I'm going to point the camera down at the Nexus. And what we're going to do now is boot into um, twerp. And we are going to boot into twerp. We are going to turn the tablet off. Your tablet will shut down. Okay. Guys, I know this is not the best camera setup, but um, yeah, you know. You guys know how this works. So now we're going to hold down the power button and the volume up button. All right. Uh, don't think that's going to work. Nope. Didn't work. We are booting into Android. All right, now there's a way you can do that by um, by holding down the power button at the same time as one or multiple other buttons. And yeah, that's all nice and good that you can do it uh, on the tablet itself, but we are just going to boot to twerp through the Nexus Root Toolkit. So what we're gonna do is just go to the Nexus Root Toolkit, which I just closed. Updating, you can see the little bar, yep. Update information. All available files are up to date. What we're going to do is we're going to go to... Don't know if we can focus any better than that. Um, we're going to go to Advanced Utilities, click Launch, and then Quick Tools. Uh, under ADB, we'll click Reboot Recovery. Rebooting your device into recovery mode. And now, as you can see, the device is rebooting into recovery mode, hopefully. Yep. Team win. All right. So here we go. Um, we are now in twerp. Um, as you can see, twerp is very nice. It's got lots of big buttons. Um, we're going to click install and we're going to go to the pictures folder. And as you can see here, are those files I copied over P A O. Oh. Uh, now I just type uh, <laughs> back, back. All right. I'm going to tap. PA grouper, that is the Paranoid Android file. And then I'm going to click Add More Zips. And that will let me add the Paranoid Android G apps 
That's that's the Google Apps. All right, so now we're at two out of ten files. Swipe to confirm flash, and now it will attempt to flash those. Now, in the past, this has not worked very well, so I'm hoping that this works. If it doesn't work, oh, crap. Oh, no. All right, you're supposed to back up before you try this. Darn it. This is probably not going to go over very well. Oh, whoa. Succeeded. That's never worked before. That has never worked for me before. Paranoid Android has, I, it's been really hard to flash in the past. I've never gotten it to work that quickly. I'm, uh, all right. Here we go. Zip install complete. All right. So if all goes well, that's what you'll see. Now, just for future reference at the home screen here, you can actually tap back up. And that way, if something goes wrong, you can go to restore and just restore it. Um, luckily, though, nothing went wrong. So now we're going to tap reboot and just tap system, I guess. Just normal reboot. All right. Uh-oh. Oh, now we're unfocused. Oh, my gosh. There we go. So Google. All right. Paranoid Android. That is the Paranoid Android boot animation. So it looks like it worked, and we will know for sure if the Google Apps worked as soon as it boots. Um, if you don't install Google Apps, you can still use your tablet perfectly fine. Uh, it'll just go right to the home screen. But if you install Google Apps, then you'll get that welcome to Android, type in your account info um, thing, which we should see in just a minute since we did install Google Apps. Android is upgrading. All right, so as you can see, uh, theoretically, we did not lose anything by flashing Paranoid Android. So as long as you were unlocked before you started, you will not lose any of your data by flashing Paranoid Android. 92 apps on here? There shouldn't have been 92 apps on there. There should have only been what came with it. I must have downloaded everything from my Google account. Although I thought I had more than 92 on my Google account, but whenever you change uh, ROMs, it'll do this Android is upgrading thing, just like it does whenever you upgrade your uh, your operating system, or whenever you upgrade your Android version on stock, it does this. It also does this whenever you change the ROM you're using. Starting apps. Okay. And now we have... Oh, Google Play, new stand has stopped. Hmm. All right. Well, this looks buggy. Yeah, I it's frozen. That is frozen. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out what the problem with that is. As you can see, I figured it out. Uh, you need to boot back into recovery or just don't reboot from recovery. Stay in recovery and you need to select wipe from the main screen and just do a normal wipe. Uh, just the standard wipe data, catch and Dalvik. Um, and that will wipe your device, and it will send you to the welcome screen in Paranoid Android. Um, so, yeah, that will wipe your data, so make sure you back everything up. At least I think it'll wipe your data. But, yeah, at this point, you can just set it up like a normal tablet and uh, or a normal Android device, and then you will have Paranoid Android installed. So, yeah, I hope that was helpful to you. Uh, and, yeah, I'm Jake Kaufman. I'm in the street, and I will see you later. See ya.